I'm Jason Deer. I'm Sammy G. And we are Dyson Dragons. Please take a look at the video description below. There you will see our timestamps as well as some information as to what the video is about. So stay tuned, it's coming up. Enjoy the show. What up gamers? Today on Dyson Dragons we are going to be reviewing the second expansion for Legends of Andor, the new Heroes expansion. Now this is an expansion that is similar to expansions that have come out for Catan. This is the five to six player expansion. Also an important thing to note, it's also done by Michael Manzel, the creator of Andor. So he's really the only one that has worked on the game and expanded his own game. And what better way to add to the fun? We've already expressed our love for Andor, and what better way to add new characters, new abilities, bring in more people to enjoy the legends of Andor. And with this box, we have new rules, we have new capabilities for different characters. You could possess a pretty powerful water spirit, which is always fun. You could share the dice around. It actually has more of a support class as well for these characters. So you're not just walking around as much as cooperation as there is. You could actually help other friends and colleagues, you know, beat up on these bigger monsters. Yeah, that it, come really, out. it really changes the game and the nice thing about the new heroes expansion is you can still play the standard four player game there are other rules to expand the five and six it even changes uh, the way you interact with the enemies and you'll see that on the board so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a drink we're going to grab our buddy but we're also gonna take out the drunken troll which is part of this my favorite guy yes. and so can't let him forget about the drunken troll no he's got beer all right so we're going to go up to the table and take a look at the new heroes. Enjoy. Stay tuned. So we're going to take a look at the heroes that come as part of the new heroes expansion. So first we're going to start with the guardian from the Black Archive, Talvora. So Talvora works the same as an archer. You are able to roll one dice at a time and attack enemies from an adjacent space. The other thing that she does have is that she is able to lower the strength of enemies. So for example, you can take the level 6 strength of a scroll and lower it down to the level 2 strength of a gore. Now this does not work as clearly indicated on her hero sheet on the final adversary for any one of the legends. Now the next hero we have is Fen, the tracker from the Southern Forest. Now one thing that is a, a little lame about Fen is the female version of Fen is just named Fenna, which I think is just a little bit weak. I would almost, I'd rather a different name entirely. Now Fen or Fenna's special ability is that they have three items that nobody else can have that they can use once per day. For example, the Raven can uncover any token, so any fog tokens or any of the rune sounds that are flipped over so you can find the one that you're looking for. They then also have the knife that they can use in one battle round to reroll one of their dice. And then there is the horn, which means that no matter what the two characters or three characters when you're fighting together's willpower is, they can use their maximum level of dice. So if it was Fena and Talvora, they could roll a total of five dice, three gray, to orange. Now we then have Bragor, the fighter from the Storm Valley. Now the interesting thing about Bragor is that Bragor can either attack from an adjacent space like a ranged character rolling one die at a time or they can engage in melee combat and roll all of their dice. The other neat thing about Bragor is that when you have your last roll of willpower, so you have a minimum of 15 willpower, when you drink from a well, you can gain one strength point instead. And then finally, we have Keela, who is the protector from the Riverlands. Now, the really interesting thing about the protector is that they also control the water spirit. Now, the water spirit gives the heroes the ability to roll one white die. Now the interesting thing about the white die is that it has a lot higher values than your regular hero die, topping out at 7. So any hero that is in the same space as the water spirit will then roll the white die. You are obligated to roll the white die when you are in the same space as the water spirit. So we've now covered the hero boards. Let's take a look at how using these heroes affects the enemies. So just to clarify how Keela can use her water spirit, 
Let's see, for example, she starts during this legend on Space 30 with her water spirit. Now, for one hour of time along the time track, Keely can move the water spirit four spaces. Now, if they want to spend another hour, you can move another four spaces. And Keely can decide to do this all at once. So if she moved the water spirit, let's say 12 spaces, that would cost three hours of her time track during the day. So now we're gonna take a look at the other part of the five to six player expansion, the how the new heroes affect the enemy board. So when you add in five players, you're gonna be using a different enemy board. So as you can see here, all the enemies are stronger than they were just a minute ago. In the base game, a gore has a strength of two and a squirrel has a strength of six. When you're using five players, you're gonna have a gore with a strength of four, squirrels with a strength of eight, and you can see as well the wardrock and the trolls are even tougher than they were before. Now, when you go up to six players, you're gonna see that the gores are now at a strength of six, squirrels at a strength of 10, and then 14 for the ward rocks, 18 for the trolls. So this is to encourage players to fight together more often. And just to give a little bit of clarification for Talvor's ability and how it is a huge asset in a five or six player game, what you can do is you can reduce the strength of a character, of an enemy character, sorry. So you can reduce the strength of a scroll to six. And you can reduce the strength of, let's say, a gore to four in the six-player scenario. Now, an important thing to note is that the rewards go down as well. So, a scroll that you've reduced would only give you the same rewards as a full-strength gore. So, you'd be only getting two gold or two willpower instead of four gold or four willpower. Or if you reduce the strength of a gore down to four, well, then you'd be getting no reward at all. So now that we've covered how the new heroes and playing with five or six players will affect the game, let's cut to our review of the new heroes expansion. So, Legends of Andor, the new heroes, what did you think? I think it was actually quite good to start with, but it's hard to review this game and it's hard yes. to review it because it's just an expansion. It's just new characters. They don't add any new legends either. There's no necessarily new gameplay to it. But well, a little bit of gameplay, yeah. but uh, not gameplay based on like legends and stories. And as Andor is a, that story-driven fantasy game experience, that's not what you're going to be getting from this expansion. And that being said, we came up with a couple of categories that we can rate these types of expansions where you could just get new characters uh, involved. And that is, is this a must have? Uh, that would be one of the categories. That means you must, you have to go out, you must buy it. It's going to expand on everything. Um, that would be one category. The other category we came up with is, is it a solid game? Is yeah. it, you know, is it good enough that you should probably consider buying it? And the third one is, you know what, save your money, pass on this. You don't necessarily need to add it into the game. So an example of a pass, unless you like Jawas, you do not need to buy the Jawa for Imperial no. Salt. But no. So that being said, we give this a very solid, solid. It's, it adds certainly some components to the game. Uh, with the new characters, if you've already beaten all the legends, it adds another replayability. Uh, it gives it a new flavor of the different stories as well. So uh, we feel it's a very good, solid expansion. Yeah, because it'll change the way that you interact with Andor, so that's always fun if you're an Andor fanatic. This is going to let you replay the game in a completely different way. Also with the support classes, it can definitely make it so that uh, you don't have to be as aggressive, which we found was uh, fairly interesting. Also with the changes to the rules in some Legends, it does add a couple of tweaks that, you know, the Legend just might surprise you. And then the fact of the matter is, when you are playing with five to six players, the game does get harder and that's one thing that we really like about the expansion is that you don't just add two heroes and play the legend the exact same way everything is a little bit more challenging which really focuses in on the cooperative element of Andor yeah. and that's what one of the things that we said originally in the first review of the game is that it excels at and this just continues it making fighting together even more important because as you saw uh, when we were looking at the components gores 
Skrulls, and even Trolls are a lot more difficult than they are in the base game, depending on how many players that you're using. And then the fact that you can take these four heroes and put them into the base game however you want, mixing them with the old heroes, or playing straight up with these new heroes, does add that little bit of flavor to it that makes it a solid expansion, and well worth uh, the price of admission. So if you've got the cash, and you're looking for some more Andor, I suggest you pick it up. That's it. And that being said, Remember, this is not going to add any new legends. It's not going to add any new stories uh, into the game. So that was a little bit of a drawback for us. But that being said, to be able to add more friends and kind of bring more people into the world of Andor, if you have a family of six, you know, you could all enjoy the experience together. And as Jay was saying, yes, it does make it harder, some of the enemies. Uh, an extra half point for me, because there's a drunken cave troll. So good job. We, we love to go at the drunken cave troll. Yes, we do. Uh, so that is, it's definitely a solid, don't expect any new, let's say, guess, no new stories, but the new, excuse me, the new characters certainly make it yep. very, very interesting to have. Also, some of the new enemies that you're able to mix in the certain legends and just take a look at the rule book, it'll tell you how to mix it in. We yep. don't want to spoil that experience nope. for you because it's uh, always a fun surprise. So we're going to end it right there. So once again, our rating for the new heroes is a solid. So I already got my drink. I just got to grab my friend. And of course, we're going to tell you to keep playing games. Keep playing games. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching guys, this is part of our Andor series of videos as we journey towards The Last Soap, the finale in the board game trilogy. Remember, if you liked what you saw, please like, please subscribe, comment below, it doesn't cost you any willpower, it doesn't cost you any gold, it's perfect. Yes, so if you're looking to see more of our Andor content, take a look somewhere, there's some cards I somewhere think. Somewhere around here, somewhere. Yeah, that will link to the rest of the Andor videos. And, as always, keep playing games.